Thanks again for joining me here at ButNowMinistry.org. And today we're going to talk about No Final Authority, Part 5. And as you have seen in Parts 1, 2, 3, and 4, you have seen scores of scholars, scores of seminaries, scores of pastors who correct their translation. They don't even have a Bible, and they correct the translation that they use, which the majority, again, have fallen for the minority text, the critical text, the text of Alexandria, the text of the Roman Catholic Sinaiticus Vaticanus text. And when you fall prey to that text, you will traffic in error, you will not believe your Bible, and you will teach others not to believe your Bible. And today we're going to look at another pastor who has led scores and scores of souls to the pit of hell, one of the biggest Bible correctors, I think, of all time. Grace to you, Pastor John MacArthur. In his New King James Version study Bible, you will find John correcting his own translation. It is sad that John, first of all, doesn't even have a Bible. Then secondly, he corrects it with the Greek, Hebrew, and his so-called scholarship, right? So let's take a look. In John verses chapters in John chapter seven, verses fifty-three through eight. Oh, I'm sorry, in John chapter seven, fifty-three. to chapter 8, verse 11. I'm sorry I had to think about the way I wrote that, but John claims in his notes on page 1597, and I quote, This section dealing with the adulteress most likely was not part of the original contents of John. How would he know it's not part of the original contents of John when we have no originals? Most likely. So he's not even sure. So you want to be taught by a pastor who's not sure about things. That's nice, isn't it? Scores and scores of people follow this guy. The New King James Version, John 7, 53. And everyone went to his own house. Okay? In the New King James, this is what you're going to find. And everyone went to his own house. And then after that verse, all the way to John chapter 8, verse 12, there are no verses. And you might even find this note in some of the new translations. This is also in the footnotes of your dumbed-down translations, such as the New International Version, and I quote, and this is what it says, because the verses are missing. The earliest manuscripts and many other ancient witnesses do not have John chapter 7, 53 through chapter 8, verse 11. The earliest manuscripts. Well, the earliest manuscripts were wrong! They're just copies and copies and copies. We have no originals. And many other ancient witnesses. What's amazing is, is what manuscripts? They never tell you. What ancient witnesses? They never tell you. Because they don't even know. In your New American Standard, it says, and I quote, John chapter 7, verse 53 through chapter 8, verse 11 is not found in most of the old manuscripts. So, what difference does it make if they're old, if they're new? They're copies and copies and copies, and we don't have the originals. So, did you study it out to make sure that it was right before you removed them? Probably not. In your Reims New Testament, it says, and I quote, John chapter 7, verse 53 through chapter 8, verse 11 is absent from most of the older manuscripts, and those that have it sometime place it elsewhere. Place it elsewhere? Where do they place those verses? In Revelation? In 1 Peter? That is amazing to me. They place it elsewhere. Where do they put it? In Genesis? Why do I need to rely on the old manuscripts when I have a Bible that is perfect without error? It is fine in my Bible. What is amazing is these new translations take out all the verses and leave John chapter 8 verse 12 in. They leave that verse in and Jesus referring to the verses the scholars say don't belong, Jesus says they do in John chapter 8 verse 12. Now let's take a look at it. John chapter 7, starting in verse 53. And every man went unto his own house, 
And it stops there in your new translations. This is what's removed. This is what's in your Bible, okay? John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. This, these verses you will not find in your New King James Bible. And John MacArthur can't figure out why they're not there, okay? Your New American Standard can't figure it out. Your New International Version can't figure it out. And your Reams New Testament can't figure it out. Just take a look at the footnotes, any of the new translations. They can't figure it out because they don't have a Bible. So John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11, and then we'll put the nail in the coffin with verse 12. Because, again, the new translations jump from John chapter 7, verse 53 to John chapter 8, verse 12. They remove 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 verses. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery, in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go, and sin no more. Those verses are not in your new translations. And then it jumps to verse 8.12, right? Well, what does verse 8.12 say? Say, then spake Jesus again. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So when you remove all those verses, how can Jesus speak again? He can't. If it goes from John 7, 53, and every man went into his house and just jumps to 8, 12, then Jesus spake again. It makes no sense. And that's the new translation that John MacArthur uses that he can't figure out why those verses are removed. But because it wasn't in some of the old manuscripts, we'll remove it. We'll just keep it out. And, and the kicker is, is they didn't remove it. They just copied it from the old manuscript into the translation they used. They just took it from one of the copies that was wrong because Jesus couldn't speak again if those verses were removed. So why not remove verse 12? It's amazing to me. So again, as we continue, these are little short um, but kind of in-your-face studies. I want to just point out different pastors and scholars with, with each of these. Um, so they're short, but there's a lot of information here. And again, these are verses that you have to have in your inner man. These are verses that you have to have so you can defend God's perfectly preserved word because these are tremendous errors. And honestly, when you talk to somebody who's been taught not to believe their Bible, they won't care. You'll see. They won't care. I had one gentleman say, well, what does that have to do with my walk? You need a Bible for, God's, for God to work effectually in you. 2 Thessalonians 2.13. Okay, You need a Bible for God's Word to work effectually in you. And if you don't have God's Word working effectually in you, and you're not studying it like it says in 2 Timothy 2.15, to show yourself approved unto God, and you're not rightly dividing because your new translations, it doesn't contain that either. 
Your new translations do not tell you to study. Your new translations do not tell you to rightly divide. Then you will not have the worthy walk that Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10 tells us to have. Because how do you get the worthy walk? Do you get the worthy walk by not having a Bible and not studying? No. You get the worthy walk, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, by growing in wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual understanding. And verse 10 says, that's how you get the worthy walk. So if I have no Bible, and I don't study, and I don't rightly divide, do you think I'll have the worthy walk? Do you think God will work effectually in me? No, he won't. You have to believe it. And in order to believe it, you have to have a Bible. These pastors and scholars that we're working through in this study have neither. They don't believe it. And they don't have a Bible. What's amazing is, is since I've been a mid-Acts dispensational Pauline rate divider of my King James Bible, I have found scores and scores of people can care less about God's Word. That's just the King James Bible. That's just the Bible, the biblical stance. They can care less. And then when you start talking to them about the different Gospels, and then when you start talking to them that Paul's our pattern, oh my gosh, you just lost, you're, you're done. Just start with the Bible. Just ask them, oh, you're going to a church? What translation do you use? Just start there. And when they tell you they use the New American Standard and you tell them that that's not a Bible, see what their reaction is. When you tell them that in the New American Standard, El Hanan killed Goliath, or there's some strange God in the furnace in Daniel, they, they'll tell you, what does that have to do with my walk? Or when you tell them that every pastor in America doesn't know when the New Testament starts for Israel, or every pastor in America doesn't know that Israel, the children of Israel, were the only ones who got the law, the Ten Commandments. Or if you tell them that Israel's fallen, the Israel on the map today is not the Israel of the Bible. What? I mean, these are... In my opinion, these are not hard things to understand in your Bible. But when you are not a Bible believer, when you are not Pauline, when you are not mid-Acts, when you are not dispensational, when you don't rightly divide, this is what has been produced. People who do not believe their Bible teaching other people not to believe their Bible. And this is Christianity in America today. Thanks again for listening. Email me with any questions at all, doctrinal questions. Go through my website at buttonownministry.wix.com slash buttonownministry. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again. And in part six, we're going to look at one last pastor, and that would be Cornelius R. Stam. Yes, he is a mid-Acts dispensationalist. We're going to look at how he corrects his translation and or Bible. Thanks again.